Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I'm finally restarting a series that I started a long time ago and then kind of abandoned, but I really liked and really want to keep coming back to, and that is my Spotlight on Petite Palettes series. So I have a gigantic eyeshadow palette collection, and I found that I personally struggle to reach for very large palettes and very small palettes. So I started this series to focus on my petite palettes and I, it was actually really good. I did videos, I did looks, I talked about them, but I kind of started, you know, not doing the series and I need to keep sticking with it. So today's Spotlight on Petite Palettes is going to be on these Wet n Wild palettes from the Rebel Rose collection that I honestly picked up months ago. <laughs> And they're both still sealed they're f yeah i think part of that is because this came out like i don't think this came out in a season that fit the look i was hella excited because the rebel rose collection is like dark and grungy and it's called the same name as my favorite lipstick from wet n wild so of course i was excited and these two palettes honestly look gorgeous they're two quads but i think they came out in like spring or like winter and I don't think that was the best time for these these should have come out in like October if not late September <sighs> so here we go I am gonna actually open these and I want to do a look and I want to talk more about my experience with small palettes and with these shadows in particular so let's go ahead and actually open these I don't want to mess up my nail. I mean, I don't know why I'm doing this because I've already I've already messed up my nails. This nail, you see this short one right here? I snapped it. So I have to cut the rest of these down tonight anyway. So let's just use my nails. And uh, I don't even know if my nails are sharp enough to open these. Never mind. I do think that is like one of the biggest unfortunate downsides to like affordable makeup is that they have to like have this packaging where it's really difficult to open. And if you mess it up, then... It looks really ugly and it's difficult. Oh, yeah, see, it's difficult to open it up because they really do like package it tight. Okay, so this is the first palette, which is really gorgeous. This is in the, I don't even think it has a name. Does it have a name? This is in House of Thorns. So we've got a kind of light, like, uh, mom oh and i just saw so the actual like packaging has like this i don't know i don't know if it show up on camera but it's actually gorgeous so we've got like this mauve kind of shimmer shade we've got a green shimmer shade and then we have two mattes in the bottom we have a matte red and a matte black this next palette is called bed of roses and i think this one is a bit easier to actually create a look with because these colors kind of all come together a bit I don't know, a bit more cohesively than this palette, even though I love, love, like, the green and the red and the black in here. So I think I'm going to stick with Bed of Roses for this particular look. We'll see. I might bring in the black as well. So I think I'm going to start out, these colors are all really dark and grungy. So I'm going to start out with, like, this dark kind of berry shade. And since neither of these have mirrors, I need to bring in a mirror. I'm just going to go in with a fluffy blending brush and see how this first applies. I've already primed and set my primer, so we're good there. Why am I so afraid just to say a hello? Hey. Or to pick up the phone just to say what is up? It's been a long time and I've been thinking... Okay, so with that shade, I have to admit that when I first applied it, it did look a bit patchy and I did have to blend it out a significant amount in order for the patchiness to go away, but it looks really pretty right now. So I'm going to go in with the next deepest matte shade in this palette and just tap off whatever excess and apply this in just the outer portion. God, and those shades, those shades look really good together. They really blend well. I honestly think, like, these palettes, even though they're small quads, I think the shades are picked out, like, really well. Like, they're very cohesive shades. So while you might only be getting, like, one solid look out of this, it's a good look. Give you a call to shoot the shit and fill you in we're reminiscing. Yeah. <laughs> On the Ooh, we're looking nice and, like, red, purpley, smoky. 
So I'm going to take this deeper shimmer shade and just use that with a finger all over my lid. And then I want to use this lighter shade as like a light in our corner highlight. So let's take this deeper shimmer. It's like a nice almost coppery kind of color. And I'm just going to put that on the lid. Things we did when we were only little children. Okay, so that shimmer isn't coming up so great with just my finger. I'm debating whether I want to like use a glitter glue i don't know let me just try a brush i'm gonna try a brush and some mac fix plus and see if that makes a difference okay so while the color applied better it actually looks a lot more dull than before which is odd i've never seen that happen with fix plus normally fix plus brings out like the best of the shimmers but it made this shimmer look a lot more dull I'm thinking a glitter glue, you might have to use a glitter glue for this, but for now I'm just going to kind of even out the two sides and apply it with my finger and we'll go in with a brush for the inner corner highlight shade. Okay, so I gotta say, I got a hell of a lot of fallout trying to build up the other shimmer shade. These shimmer shades aren't living up to like the regular wet and wild formula for shimmers. The mattes blended out pretty nicely, but these shimmers are like really disappointing. I am, I'm actually kind of shocked. I'm barely getting anything on my inner corner with that shade. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to brush off the rest of this fallout. I am going to throw on some liner mascara and I'm going to just use the two matte shades from this palette to do my lower lash line and then we'll come back. Honestly, I gotta say I'm pretty disappointed by these shimmers. Okay, so I'm back with the finished look. I, I did the best I could. I used the Tarte eyeliner, just a black liner on my lash line. I used the color plop, color, <laughs> color plop. <laughs> I'm gonna call it color plop from now on. I used the color pop black uh, mascara, and then I just used the two matte shades on my lower lash line. I have to say, I like the matte shades in this little palette. The shimmers were really disappointing, which is sad because I really like the regular like Wet and Wild shimmer formula, the regular Wet and Wild matte formula. But in this palette, I feel like the shimmers were just really not up to par. I ended up taking the highlighter that I used today in my inner corner and on my brow bone just to kind of brighten this up a little bit, but it's a bit disappointing. Um, I'm a bit worried about this palette now because I was actually really excited for the two uh, shimmer shades in here. So I don't know how that's going to work out. Let me know if you guys want to see another video with just this palette actually using it or if you just want me to update you like in a comment or on Instagram. So that is it for this spotlight on petite palettes. This is actually I think the first like meh review I've given a spotlight on petite palettes. But let me know down below if you like the series, what other small palettes you would like to see me do on this series. And I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye. Thank you.